I don't feel it. Amen. And a few announcements, amen. I just want to remind you of regular services Sunday morning at 10, Sunday evening at 6, every Wednesday at 7. Don't forget next next Saturday we have our men's class uh, with Pastor Lorenzo Rivera, amen, from our mother church in El Centro, California. Yeah. Amen. We are hosting this, amen. Uh, also, August 20th and 21st, we're going to have a three service revival, yeah. amen, with Pastor Alfonso, amen. You can have a good time, amen. Yeah. Uh, invite someone. Uh, don't forget end of summer luncheon uh, for the women, amen, in Avondale. Arizona, amen, it'll be a one-day event, amen, go Friday, come back Saturday, uh, it's going to be a good time of fellowship for the women, amen, uh, guest speaker will be uh, Stephanie Rivera, amen, and uh, so these are all the announcements, amen, we're going to flip it off right now, so let's go serve God. <laughs> amen, don't forget, amen, uh, give, you can give online, those of you watching, uh, at home or wherever you're at at work um, in the middle of the night amen uh, you can give uh, you can give online through the Zelle app amen um, remember we're using uh, the Zelle app and our our um, our uh, you, you can get us at the ndgive at gmail.com amen the phone number we're removing, but it's it. so it's ndgive at gmail.com. Amen. So you give, amen, with no part. You allow God to bless your finances. Amen. So let's bow our hearts, amen, as we bless the gift of the giver. God, my Father, we thank you, God, for this time you have given us, allowing us to give into your kingdom, God. I pray, God, you you anoint your, your offering, God. You multiply it, God. Bless those who give, God. Uh, God, open up the windows of heaven, God, and pour a blessing upon their lives, God, that they may not have room enough to receive, God. We declare your word this evening, God, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, and at the door. What a mighty God we serve. This, uh, this evening I entitled this message uh, you won't you will not know if you don't go amen they have this uh, this uh, this new thing uh, the FOMO F-O-M-O fear of missing out amen it's a, I don't know what you want to call those things that they do on little acronyms, FOMO, fear of missing out. It's a thing, meaning that, you know what, uh, you want to be there. You don't want to, you don't want to miss it, amen, because you don't want to miss out. I mean, you ever, I remember uh, uh, as a kid, my, my mom would, would go to the, go to the stores and uh, she would tell me I couldn't go and we used to have a station wagon. And uh, so I knew she was going to go, I knew she didn't want me to go. I go jump in the back of the station wagon, and then where she couldn't see me, they said those big old long boat station wagons. I remember we had a one of those uh, early '70s station wagon, huge, long. Those things were long. I think the the front and the rear had different area codes. Amen. They're so stinking big. <laughs> and I'd jump in the back, and then uh, I would pop out. Amen. After she'd get where she was going. Good thing she wasn't doing nothing wrong. Amen. So that would have been a surprise. <laughs> amen. But, but as kids, we do that, amen. We don't want to miss out, you know. We know they're going to go, we're going to go see cousins or something. You want to go because you don't want to miss out, you know. Mm-hmm. You have a relative as a pool, you want to make sure you go whenever they go visit because you want to miss out on the pool party. Yeah. So there's a saying, fear of missing out. So I entitled this, you won't, you'll never know if you don't go. The problem in, in today's Christianity in today's churches, is so many people don't bring, they, they have that fear of missing out mentality, uh, uh, 
the that YOLO, you know that that that's another one. YOLO. It's uh the, the young young and uh what is it uh I don't know. It has to do with uh being being uh, reckless. And and the thing is is that when we get saved, we leave all that behind. We all of a, all of a sudden become dignified. We no longer take risks. Amen. Uh, all of a sudden, we obey the laws. Amen. Uh, and, and, and we call the officers, sir, now. Hey, sir, how you doing, Mr. Officer, sir? And, and we no longer speak the way we used to. Amen. Which is a good thing. But but what happens is that is, is we don't bring that fear of missing out mentality. And sometimes we need that back into the church. We need to bring that back with us. And because so many so many people in today's church is are missing out on God's calling in their lives. They're missing out on what God wants to do in them. And and you're never going to know what God's going to do in your life if you don't show up. If you're not there, you know. And and we do have people who watch faithfully, and and some of them watch because of where they live and there's no church near them. And so this isn't for you guys. But there's some people who can actually come to the building and be here, but they'll watch at home. Come on. And and. And they're never going to know what God's going to do in their life. They're going to have a form of Christianity. They're going to have an idea of, serv of, of servitude and serving God. But they're never going to experience the fullness of God. They're not going to have God moving in all the areas of life because they, they're not giving the body of Christ the opportunity to be, be as one in its unity. And they're going to miss out on the calling. You know, you get, you get single men and single women wanting to watch church online, but they... But but and, and, and wondering why they're still single, amen, is because they don't go to church where so they can actually meet a good Christian. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 they forget about that fear of missing out. Right. And 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 we're not gonna know what God's gonna do in our lives if we don't show up. We we need to be there. We need to be in the will of God. See, we need to be ready. When 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 serving God, we need to be ready for what ever God has in store for us. See, we never know what God's going to do. See, God is going to take you on an adventure. Let me tell you, God's going to take you on an adventure. He's going to take you on a journey. He's going to take you on, on a ride of a lifetime. But are you ready? You can say I'm ready, but if you're not showing up, you're not ready. Right. And I don't mean just this as church attendance. I mean this in all, in all aspects. Because it's not just church attendance. Sometimes, hey amen, how many know you could be somewhere but not be there? You're there, but you're not there. Physically, you're there, but you're not there mentally. We could be the same way in church. We can physically go to a church, amen, but not spiritually be present because it's a spiritual world we live in. So, so we got to be there. We got to be there. Body, soul, spirit, amen. We got we to gotta be there. See, as Christians, we are called to be servants. So we are servants of God. Anything else is a religion. You understand? We're not religious people. We talked about that this, this morning. But we're called to be servants to God. We are bond servants to God. And anything else besides being a servant when living for God is just a religion. You must be a servant if you're going to serve God. What does that mean? It means making yourself available for what God has for your life. You know, you see, you see people, you know, lately, a lot of people, and, and, and it's just Facebook is what it makes it look like. You know, we have gone a lot of places, but man, we run into people and they're like, man, you go here, you guys are all over the place. You're this. Every time I turn around, you guys are somewhere. It's not that we're somewhere all the time, just that Facebook makes it look like it's, you're somewhere all the time because they always keep posting and reposting and keep showing into the big circles right. of the internet. Amen. But we are, but we do go a lot of places. And God has given us opportunity, but if I never show it up, it'll never happen. So you got, you got it, you got it, you got to be ready. God wants to do something in your life, but He can't do it if you're not there. And I'm not talking just physically there, because physically we could be somewhere, but it doesn't mean spiritually we're ready. But we got to be there. We're called to be servants. See, and, and, and unless we're servants, all we are is a religion. A religion is an event that happens in a routine. It is not. It, it is not life changing. Religion is not. Is not life changing. Religion is not a commitment. Religion is not loyalty. Religion is not spiritual. 
Religion is not even biblical. Because everybody that was religious in the Bible, the ones that are coming against Jesus, amen. Right. They're the ones trying to kill him and persecute him. So we need to be servants unto God. We need, we need servitude unto God. You see, we're, we're, we are servants. We're, bond, we're bound to heaven as a bond servant committed to the desires of our master, our savior, Jesus Christ. That's who we are. We're committed, amen, to, to his desire. A servant, amen, a, a slave. You know, we were once slaves. The Bible says we were slaves to sin. Well, I was a slave. I was control my own self. No, you weren't. You were a slave. You sinned. You were just sin. Why? Because it was natural. It's just what you did. We all did it. It was just what we did. I mean, that ain't saying that you're a rapist, a pervert, or a drunk, or an, an alcoholic, a, a drug. That's not what that's saying. What that's saying is either you're living for God or you're living for sin. There's no in between. Well, I'm a good person. Well, then you're self-righteous. Either way, it's still sin. Sin is sin. Holiness is holiness. There's no, there's no gray area for the two. So before we gave our lives to God, we were slaves unto sin. We were bound by sin, never quitting, always ready to do it. Right. So I want to read 1 Corinthians. I'm going to start here at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 18 to 24. So we need to understand that we have been set free. That, 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 that our past is our past. Our old religion has been, has been removed from us. Our own commitments, our own, our own ways of thinking, the way, the way we were raised, all that needs to change. Who we were isn't who we're to become. God has delivered us from our past to give us a future. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 18 to 24, the Bible says, But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches, was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not become circumcised. Circumcision is nothing. It's, it's, and circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Yes, we were. We were slaves, right? We were in sin. Do not be concerned about it. But if, if you can be made free, rather use it. You've been met, you've been, you have been set free, Paul says. Because you have been set free, he says, now use it. In verse 22, he says, For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he who is called well free is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. God, I pray God you bless your word. And we thank you, Lord. Just let me pray. Right here, Paul is speaking about circumcision and uncircumcision. He's talking about this because when speaking of, about circumcision, what he's actually, what he's actually doing, he, he's speaking to them about their old religion, their old ways, the things that they were raised in, the things that they were taught growing up, uh, the traditions, uh, the, 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 the outcomes, the, the, the ceremonious things, uh, the things that, that they would have to do in routine, the things that they were doing, uh, uh, the, 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 the certain certificates they get for putting on different acts upon their religious belief. And he's talking to the Jews and he's telling he says, you know, forget about circumcision, uncircumcision. Why are you complaining about that kind of stuff? That's over with. We're not here for that anymore. You've been bought at a price and, and your salvation has been, is, is worth a lot more. It's not about that anymore, he says. He says, he says follow the commandments. If you, want to, if you want to live for God, follow the commandments. Do something for God. He says, don't worry about the religious ways that you, were, that you were brought up in because those old ways, the way we were raised, the things that we were taught, those things are the very things that pull us back, that keep us from the fullness of God. So what Paul, what Paul said was circumcision is not relevant. It does not matter. Forget what you were taught, how you were raised, the religion that you came from, and the traditions that you are used to. 
Paul says circumcision does not matter because, because none of that can save you. Right. None of that can save you. Right before service, we're talking uh, in, in regards to uh, communion. And we, we do communion here. But some churches do it every service. And if you do, praise the Lord for you. I don't do it every service. We do it certain times a year. And we'll do it to give honor and, and, and to be obedient to what God's word says. Yes. But I don't do it every service because it just my personal thing is I don't want to remove the importance of it and make it a religious act. Yes, that's right. You see, and sometimes people do that and it helps tie them to their old ways. Mm -hmm. yep. It ties them to their past. But Paul says, forget your past, dude. Let's get to the future. You ain't gonna get, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna make it to the promises of God and, and to what Jesus has for your life and the purpose of his death and the resurrection and the salvation he has provided for you if you remain in the past. It's never gonna happen. He says, forget that past. Move forward. You gotta get, you gotta leave that where it was at. See, this is Paul's attempt to get your attention. And, re and, and remind us where our salvation comes from. We've got to remember where our salvation comes from. It doesn't come from a routine or from, from a way or, or a thought, amen. And, uh, and, and you know, people, amen, we, we're raised certain ways. We're raised certain ways. You can always tell a little girl that was raised by a single dad. You can always tell. Because she's more tomboyish. You can always tell. Just as you can always tell a man, a, a, a boy who was raised by a single mother, because he sits a little bit more on the feminine side, it just always happens that way. And it's not, it's not either one of the parents' fault. It's what it is is that the man can only teach the girl to be a man. He doesn't know how to be a girl. Why? Because he's a man. That's it. And the woman, when she raises a boy, she can teach him how to be a woman. He can't teach her how to be a man because she's not a man. She can, they both do their best impressions of, of the opposite, but they're not, they're not the same, so they can't do it. I don't care what, what the schools want to teach. I don't care what the country wants to tell you. I don't care what our government says. Man is man, woman is woman. Take it or leave it, that's your problem. It is what it is. And Paul says, you know what, leave the circumcision alone. Get rid of your religion. Leave the answer. What are you arguing about that? It doesn't even matter. What matters is where you are in Christ today. That's what matters. Yeah. Forget the past. Forget the hurts. Forget the pains. Forget, forget all the, the complaints. Because, you know, we all have pains. We all have hurts. We all have things that we bring in our, our luggage. Yeah. Things that, that defined us from who we were. Even things in our Christianity that has altered who we are as a saint of God. Paul says none of that matters. What matters is, is, is where you're at today with Jesus. Yes. That's what matters. Will we follow him? When, when God comes and he calls upon our name, will we get up and follow him? In Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. <coughs> Matthew 4, chapter 4, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, it says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting their nets into the sea, and they were, they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going, verse 21, going from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. In the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. See, as sinners, we never question the sin. We just sin. We don't question sin. It's just there. We just, hey, it's there. Okay, well, that's what it is. You know, you know, it, and 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 when we get when we come become to serve God, things change. You know, before before I got saved, you know, we didn't we didn't care about the cars that we got in. We didn't care about where they were going. We just went, right? We didn't care. 
There has been times when someone would come over and say, go with me. I never asked, asked where. I just went. When I was growing up, I, I, I may, maybe, you know, in today's times, a little bit different. But during that time, I don't know, like Brother Jesse would relate to it. It's just what it was. It's just what we did. People would come up and say, hey, let's go. All right, let's go. That's it. We're already, on the, we're already down the road. Hey, where are we going? Don't worry about it. We'll, just, we'll, we'll be back. Okay, well, I'm gone. I don't care. I don't care where I'm going. I didn't want to ask where I was going. Who cared? We didn't want to ask a lot of times because back then, it was all about, you got to be down for who you were. You got to, the people you hung out with got to know that you're down for whatever. You never wanted to look weak. So I never asked where I was going. I just knew that I was going to take care of business wherever I was at. Sometimes it was fun. Sometimes it was a party. Sometimes it was strictly business and we got in a lot of trouble. Right. But I didn't really care either way. I was prepared to have fun and I was prepared to get busted and go to jail or die. <laughs> Either one, I was gonna, I was, I was ready for it. I didn't care because that's who I was. That's what I did. That's the way I lived. I didn't want to miss out. I knew that something was gonna go down, and I wanted to be there. I wanted to know. I wanted to be a part of it. I didn't want to miss out on what, what was gonna happen. Something great was gonna happen that night, and I wasn't gonna be, I wasn't gonna miss it. I was, I wanted to be a part of it. And that's what we need to do in today's church. I remember waking up in places as a teenager, not knowing where I was at, not even knowing how I got there. I remember one time waking up, me and a buddy, and he was like 10 years older than I am. Maybe not quite as 10 years old, but he's, he's, he's older than me. Then, mind you, when you're 14, somebody who's 78 years older than you, that brings them into the early 20s. That's a big difference. And I'm hanging out with them. About 14 years old. I remember. All I remember is we're at a party. I don't remember if it was. I still don't remember if it was a Friday or Saturday. All I knew is that I woke up late morning, whatever day it was. I had zero clue where I was at. Did not recognize the house. Did not recognize the people in the house. I knew my buddy. Hey, hey, fool, come on, let's go. We got up. We walked outside. Him and I both looked around like, "Is anybody that screen over there?" We went walking, looking for the. Oh, okay, I know where I'm at now. We had no clue. It's what we did. That wasn't crazy. That wasn't like, "Whoa, what's wrong with you?" In today's world, that's like, "Whoa." No, back then that was just what you did. That was that was what you would call Friday night. That's just what you did. Fourteen years old. That's what you did. I remember once when I was 16 years old, I once had some friends that showed up at my house. See, and I had all kinds of different, I had, I had friends of different, I remember, I remember I would party, I was like at a, like a animal house, wild, um, Caucasian party, amen, <laughs> rock music and everything going on, everybody just all jumping in pools and getting high and everything. Then the next day, I'm over here with a bunch of cholos. And the next day, I'm over here with just just some nerds, and over here I'm with the with the disco crowd. I mean, I was with all kinds of different people. And then, and in the back of all that, I, I'm I'm dealing with drugs in the background when no one else knew. And 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 so it was just a different time. So so these guys they showed up at my house. I was 16 years old. I I was 16. It was a Friday night. I just got home from work, hey man. And yeah, I was working full time at 16 because I had got kicked out of high school. They showed up, and and all they said was. I said, hey, come on, let's go. I didn't ask where. The only question asked is when we coming back. They go, we'll be back Sunday. All right, grab me a change of clothes. I almost took off. I, and all it was was a t-shirt and another pair of shorts. Rolled them up. I almost I took off. That's it. All I know is that we're, we're on the we're on the 10 freeway heading east, and and we're doing we're no lie we're doing at least 100 miles an hour the entire time heading towards the Colorado River. We, in traffic, in the emergency lane, still going 100 miles an hour, flying through everybody. I thought for sure we were going to die. I really did. I, we were going to crash, we were going to die and go up in flames. Everybody in the car is drinking. None of us were 21. We were just a bunch of dumb kids 
party, that was it, on our way to the river. I never once said, hey, you know what, I changed my mind, pull over. I don't want to do this. You know, if you're crazy, dude, you're not driving right, I need to get out of the car. I just went with it. Why? Because I don't want to miss out. Because when we got to the river, man, if it was that crazy in the car, can you imagine what was going to happen once it got to the river? <laughs> but we never made it to the river. California Highway Patrol, Indio Division. Put a stop to that. But growing up, before I gave my life to God, I never cared. I did it. For what? Why should I? Why should I care? Come on, man. I only live, I only live once. That's it. Yolo. You only live once. <laughs> you only live once. Let's go. Let's do it. FOMO. Yolo. FOMO. You only live once. Got the fear of living, missing out. Let's do this. But when we get saved, we pull back. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not that I don't want to miss out. It's just I don't know if I want to do that. Come on. That's just not me. I, I, you know, I'm just not that kind of guy. I'm not that kind of girl. We don't do those. I, you know, I just wasn't raised. I was more. I was raised kind of shy, more of an inward person, and I'm more of a, a you know, inward. I'm not an extrovert. I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Talking in front of people, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you're going to Mexico? Oh, no, I can't go to Mexico. Why? Well, you know, they eat different kinds of food over there. I heard, no, I can't do that. <laughs> oh, they got cartels. Most of those cartels are here. <laughs> the, the, only, only the warehouses are there. All the workers are here. Right. I'm in America is where the money's at. <laughs> they don't, they, that, that's just the distribution center. <laughs> this is where all the retail stores are at. Right. This is where it all happens. I don't want to go to Mexico because that's where the cartel's at. Right. Well, go talk to your neighbor, see where he's doing in the evenings. But we but we don't we don't expand, we don't we don't go beyond. It's not who I am. That's not the way I was raised. I, I don't do this because of that. You know, I don't I don't speak well in front of other people, so I, I don't do it. I was raised that way, so I don't do it. I, I, you know what? I would give to the church, but I was told, you know, growing up that the whole church wants his money. So, you know, and it sounds like that's what's true. So I don't want, I don't want anything to do with it. And, and we separate ourselves because of our previous, our previous life. And Paul says, you know what? Don't worry about circumcision and uncircumcision. Your old religious ways don't matter anymore. That those are irrelevant. That's irrelevant. It's the only thing that matters. Amen. Is is is, is living for God, uh, obeying the commandments, and, and giving your life to God. That's the only thing that matters. Paul says. See, we can let circumstances hold us back. You can let circumstances in your life hold you back. And so many times I've heard people say, I would go, but. And they name all these things as to why they can't do things. Well, I can't do it because of. Well, I can't do it because, you know, I, I heard it a long time ago. In the first church I ever sat in, it was pretty bold. And I remember... Him saying, God who serves is a jealous God. And anything you put before God is an idol in the eyes of God. Yeah. So if you put your children's birthdays before God, you're making your child an idol. And the Bible says he'll destroy all the idols. And and, 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 and almost basically said, if you don't if you don't put your child aside, God's gonna kill your kid. Right. <laughs> it's not what he's saying, okay? It's not what God's saying, it's not what the Bible says. But God wants to be first, okay? But that's kind of what I was taught, that's what I was told. Yeah. That's why it was important to listen to Paul when he says, you know, I leave the circumcision alone because that your older religious ways don't matter anymore. But that's the way it was. And we let certain certain things take control of us. I've 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 put I've put a, a hold on my own 20th wedding anniversary. I've done it. I've put a hold on a lot of things. My own children have to rearrange their own schedules for celebrations, for events around our church schedule. Why? Because I'm not going to put anything else before my God. Amen. It's what we got to do. But if we're, if we're not careful, we'll allow circumstances to hold us back. In the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 57 through 62. Luke, chapter 9, verse 57 to 62. The Bible says, now it happened as they journeyed on the road. Now this is this is Jesus and, and, and the disciples that he's already called. Amen. And we just read about. It says, as they journeyed on the road, that some someone said to him, 
Now this is him walking. This is Jesus and the disciples. They're walking. And somebody sees them. He sees a little crowd of people as they're, as they're traveling. And somebody sees them. Doesn't say who his name is. It just says, and he says, this is what the person he says. He says, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Then Jesus says to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. The son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another said, then, then, then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, wait, let me first go bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you. Uh, but but, but uh, let me first go bid them farewell who are at my house. And Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand, having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We spend so much time looking back looking at where, we, where we've been instead of where we're going, looking at what life used to be instead of allowing God to take us somewhere, letting the things of our past our, and our family and our friends hold us back from the opportunities God has. See, these men had the opportunity to follow Jesus. They had the opportunity to be in the front row of what God was doing and what he was going to do. But they would not let go of the past long enough for Jesus to give them a future. Lord, let me first go bury my father. You know this story it says, let me go first bury my father. You know his father wasn't sick. His father wasn't dying. His father was, was fine. What he was saying is, Lord, I will give you my time when I have nothing else to live for at home. I'll go with you, Lord. But you know what? Let me bury my father first. But your father's not sick. But I, yeah, I know. But you know what? In the next 15, 20 years... He's going to get older and he's going to, you know, he's going to slow down and, and I need to be there for him until he dies. Once he's dead, you know what, Lord, I, I know where you're at. Um, uh, don't change your phone number. I'll, I'll, I'll catch up with you. I'll, I'll, I'll text you. <laughs> let me first go bury my father. The other one says, he says, let me first go bid them farewell who were at my house. Okay, so he didn't say, listen, listen to what he says. He says, first, let me go bid them farewell who were at my house. He's not saying, let me go home and tell my family bye. No. People were visiting him. People were living with him. People were there at his house. He says, at my house. People were at his house. He says, he says let me go bid them farewell. In other words, I'm going to go back, and when they're ready to leave, when they're ready to go about their business, and I can tell them bye when they're ready, then I can come visit you. God. Then I can be a part of what you want. But you know what, let, let me see what they want to do first. Let them, you know, they're at my house, you know, I'm a good host, and you know, it'd be rude. It'd be rude, Lord. It'd be, you don't want me to be rude, Lord, right, right? You don't want me to be rude? Okay, Lord, I'm not going to be rude, so I'm going to go back over here. Let me fit them farewell, farewell, because they're at my house. See, what opportunities are you allowing to pass you? These men miss their calling. And I don't know if you realize, but you know that the Bible doesn't even mention their names? Right. It doesn't even mention them. When, when, when Jesus was walking by the sea of Galilee, it clearly states. It clearly states. Then he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, Andrew his brother, casting out the nets into the sea. Mm -hmm. Then it says, and then immediately they laughed. And it says, and he continued, he saw two more brothers, James, son of Zebedee. And John, his brother. You notice, you notice that they, they mention not just the, the disciple who followed him, but they also mention their parents. You know why? Because God will never forget your family. He doesn't, he doesn't forget your family. Right here, the Bible says that, that it, was, it was Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting the nets. Right? And then it says that James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, were in the boat with Zebedee their father. They mention even Zebedee, the father's name. Why? Because Zebedee became important to who God was in their life. Zebedee became important to Jesus Christ. Why? Because they left him behind and God says, I'm going to take care of Zebedee. 
I'm going to make his name famous. People are going to read about him for years and years to come because, because you released your children at all costs to follow me. And they mention him. But when you fast forward and you come back down over here, the names aren't even mentioned. They don't even know who they are. And they miss their opportunity. See, just because the Bible says that, that he knew us, he knew who we were before we were born, that he called us by our name, just because we know that that to be true, that he has a plan for our life, just because we know that the Bible says that Jesus Christ knows who our name is, he knows who we are, does not mean that we're, we're, we made it to heaven yet. It means that he knows what he wants. It means he knows who he can use. He's just waiting for that person to rise up. He's waiting for that person to surrender it all and say, God, I'm going to follow you. These other men, names were never mentioned. See, the Bible says that we will be judged by our works in the name of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, it says, Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You think these men who needed to go bid them farewell and, 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 and to go bury their father who wasn't sick? You think you think that that was, a, that, that was uh, Jesus saying, Oh, you know, by the way, how did you spell your name again so I can get it in my father's book? Um, why you go over that way? Oh, uh, yeah, I won't change my name. I won't change my number. You call me. You text me. Let me know. I'll send, you, I'll send you a pin drop so you know where I'm at. You can find GPS me. No. His name wasn't available. It wasn't even given. He didn't want to do it. Jesus said, well, forget you. I don't know what your name for. I go, I'm not going to write it down. I'm not going to put it in my book. And the Revelation says those who weren't found in the book were cast into the lake of fire. So you never know what God's going to do if you never go. Right. There's, there's opportunities in life that are coming your way that are God-ordained. Listen, before I gave my life to God, I believe there was opportunities in my life that were God ordained because he knew what his plan for my life was. One time, my father comes over, I was 18 years old, laying down in bed. Didn't have much to do in life, I just doing nothing. Party, that was it. My father comes over, he goes, hey, come on, let's go. I didn't ask where. All I did is put on a baseball hat, threw on some shorts. I'm going to know some guns. Let's go. I didn't know where we were going. I was like, well, chances are we are going to the beach or something. I don't know. He was always going somewhere crazy. Still does. And we took off. We didn't go far. We went to, we went to a party. When it was at that party, I met a girl. She was pretty. Beautiful girl. But I had no idea that that day meeting that girl was going to change the rest of my life. I had no idea that I would be celebrating 30 years of marriage with her that day. I had no idea that we raised three kids. I had no idea that we'd have grandchildren. I had no idea that God was going to use both of us to do his will. To build his church to preach the gospel around the world see there's opportunities God puts in your in your place right in front of you we're so afraid of something else because of our past because of our history because of what we think we are what we should be that we miss out on what God wants us to be and what he's going to do in our life Can you imagine my life today would not be the same at all if my father came over, I didn't say, all right, let's go. If you would have told me where we were going, I probably wouldn't have went. That's why it's good I didn't ever ask. Because where, we're, where we went was nowhere near where I would ever go to. <laughs> Nothing where I, I would never go there. <laughs> I would say you wouldn't catch me dead there, which is probably true because you caught me alive there. <laughs> I thought I never would have went there. I never asked. I said, let's go. Let's, let's do it. Let's just do it. 
Why would I hold back now? When God blessed me, because he knew that, that he was going to use my life and my wife's life to change lives in this world, in other countries, in other languages that I don't even speak. God knew my future before I even knew I had a future. He gave me the path before I even knew the way. What are you missing out on today? See, we're going to be challenged by God. And God's going to, God's going to, going to ask us to move. Get up and take chances. He says, pick up your cross and follow him, right? He says, if you don't pick up your own cross, you can't follow him. He wants you to get up and do something. We did it for sin. But now that we're saved, we no longer are willing to get up and move. I, I talked about prayer this morning, corporate prayer. And we can't even get up to do that. What hope is, 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 is there in Christianity? What hope is there in Christianity if we can't get on our knees and pray? What hope is there? See, God has a life-changing, life-altering, Heaven ordained event waiting. We know that this is true. And this is writ a written promise of God in the Bible. But the question today is what are you going to do? Yeah. You will not know if you don't go. I long for the days when I first got saved we never took jobs that took us out of church we never went we never went to events that removed us from our calling and whenever we got together all the brothers all we talked about was what city did you want to go to because we wanted to pastor a church because we were hungry for the calling of God yeah. how I long for those days I was excited I was excited Friday night watching all those churches getting launched and watching it live and you just see all these churches and you're just naming all these cities, all these places, you know, all the places that all of us over here are afraid to go to because the, the cartels that are down there, they're going into the heart of these places and they're just going and, and going and, and, and minister. You got, you, got, you got a young man and his wife from Tijuana who grew up poor, nothing no value, nobody knew their name, who's now a man that's gonna go start a work in another country in Spain to bring the gospel to people into a country that they don't even realize that God's gonna change their lives. We're talking about a man who, who, who grew up with nothing. He told us a story of coming Coming from, he, he was down further in Mexico and he came up to Tijuana with nothing. Just a bag of hose. And God says, I'm going to use, that's, that's the kind of person to use. The one that's willing to leave it all behind to follow me. So the question today is, what are we going to do? Will we go? Or are we going to stay? I like everybody right close. I respect to Jesus in here. You know, today we are two good services, two good sermons. I know when I preach, and I know when God preaches. Because when I preach, it's no good. But sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. But when God preaches, I want to hit the altar. Because every time I preach, it's not always it's not always me, it's God. And I don't ever want it to be me. But I'm telling you, God has a plan. Today, God spoke today. God spoke today. God's telling us, church, we need unity in prayer. Saying, church, we need to come together. Saying, church, without 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 seeking my face, I cannot do nothing. The Bible says, unless those who labor, unless those who are going to labor, unless the Lord goes before them, those who labor, labor in vain. 
So unless we see God first, God ain't going to do nothing. And tonight, God is going to call you to much more, greater things. But he wants you to leave the past behind. So what, man? Yeah, we mess up. So what? Leave that alone. Let's move forward, man. Let's let God just be God in our lives. Let's let God continue to reach the world through us. Let's continue to let God, amen, have his way in our families. Why do we hold back? Wasn't his death enough? So this evening, amen, we're going we're gonna to stand. We're going to sing a song. And these altars are going to be open. If God spoke to you, you need to come to the altar.